They know I got an intro, right? Yeah, you do the clap and you introduce and you do the do and you just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Go away. Go ahead. Do your thing. Fuck up, YouTube. I am your host. Many over the tutorials and reviews. Back in here with yet one more video. Joined today by a new guest. Hey, folks. Ashley. What's up? Not much. How, you? How are you? Pretty good for a rainy day. You doing all right? All right, cool. Well, we're gonna take this rainy day mm -hmm. and bring a little sunshine to it. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna be reacting to a video. Shout out to Patreon supporter. Mr. Michael Bennett, I see you, my G, for this video to react to. Dating is Dead from Kevin Carr, and this is a TEDx video from Wilmington, Delaware. I actually lived in Wilmington, Delaware for like four years. I hated the city. Really? Oh my God, yeah, it was, it's, it's like the, it's in the armpit of Philly. So, so you get like a lot of Philly characteristics, but it's just like a, it, it's like it's, it's like it's little nephew that never grew up. Like it's it's kind of like it's like the a, it's a, a it's, dwarf nephew. Yeah, it's like a yeah. It's a dope hub city because you're like two hours away from um, New York. Mm -hmm. You know, you're like four hours from D.C. You're like thirty minutes from Philly. So, you know, you're real close to um, like Richmond. So you're in between a lot of different things. But like the city itself, I mean, after five p.m., the place would just close the hell down. But anyway, we're not gonna be <laughs> talking about Wilmington. He's ruined the whole city. Yeah, sorry, I have PTSD from that city. Clearly. Anything to say before we get started? Uh, no. no? Right. Just I'm excited to do this. See how it goes. All right. Let's get right in. So, here's the bad news. Dating is dead. In fact, many of the practices that we've grown accustomed to, the ones that we've read about and watched on TV, often fantasized about, they don't exist anymore. So what does that mean for what is now America's largest generation, millennials. What does that mean for love? What are my chances of finding love? What does that mean for sex? I mean, listen, dating is one thing. Sex is still alive, right? And if dating is dead, then who's to blame? Apparently, me. And not to point the finger, Many of you in the audience, the millennials, they call us the hookup generation. If you Google the words millennials and dating together, you'll come up with all type of headlines. The end of courtship, the millennials and their dating woes, Tinder and the dawn of the dating apocalypse. They really thought about that one. Now, content like this isn't without merit, but it also isn't an accurate reflection of the whole picture. It's more like alternative facts. <laughs> now, unless you've been living off of the grid for, say, the past decade or so, you do understand that, yes, sex is more accessible than it's ever been. And even with that being the case, according to Pew Research, we're actually having less sex than any generation since our grandparents. So, Grandma, I wasn't that fast after all. They say that relationships have lost value amongst our generation. And Real quick, I, I'm going to have to look into that Pew Research because I just do not believe I that. I refuse to believe that. that. There's no way that's true. I don't think that. I'd have to look into the data. Like, I'd have to Google whatever research, Pew Research study, because mm -hmm. I feel like, no, like, we're having way more. I feel like... It's more accessible, like, the how we relate to sex as individuals have changed. Like, yeah. There's yeah. no way. There's I mean, no it's, way. I mean, I would say like it's it's changing a lot for women. I feel like yeah. for men, it's been pretty consistent and relative in a sense that like throughout history, generally men have been like the more bodies that you have, the more of a man that you are mm -hmm. or whatever the trope is. And then for women, it's been the less bodies. But like if you listen to like music today, if you... Um, tap into some of the teachings of like the feminist movement and equaling out gender roles, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's there's less of a an importance in media on a woman's body count, right? So which but it but it's still prevalent. 
Because you do have that either a woman has to be pure or she has to know how to do everything in the book. So it's like, where do those women lie that's in that gray area? When you say it's prevalent, it's still prevalent like the opposite? Yeah. Um, not like it was in the 60s. In the 60s, no. But let's or say the from the, you know, from or when the we 80s. were in high school compared to when we were in college compared to now in adulthood. I still see some of those, some guys make those same claims of... You know, they still don't want a girl that gets around, per se. No, I get you. But I, I would still say that that's the same generation because you're a young buck. From you being in high school. I'm not that young, you're sir. Younger, you're young girl. It's okay. Whatever. You're a spring chicken. It's okay. Am I? <laughs> but, the, but, but the Pew Research, he was talking about our parents or our grandparents. I forget exactly what he said. You know what I'm saying? But it's different back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Mid to late 90s, there started to be a shift, in my opinion, mm -hmm. uh, on kind of like what is the, you know, what, it, you know, that's like back in the Little Kim era, the Foxy Brown era, yeah. you know, when they had songs talking about licking and sticking and, you know what I'm saying? I was new for hip hop at the time, you know Facts. what I mean? Facts. And they popularized that and it, it kind of, it started from there and then great, gained legs in other avenues, such as the feminist movement, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Now you got like the Amber Rose, what's it called? The Slut Walk. That's another video, cause I, that's a, that's a, it's a whole, whole nother video. whole conversation in this song, cause it has its pros, but it also has its cons. But it's really like, what is her agenda, and then also what does that agenda mean to you as a person that supports it or is against it? Like I feel like there is so many layers to it than it just is. oh we're supporting sluts. Yeah, no. there's a lot of other layers to it, and yeah, sometimes you have to understand why someone is incentivized to do something. Mm -hmm as a means to see how it fits within your life. Mm -hmm. And I think she's incentivized in different ways than the average person. Oh, definitely. But that's a whole nother video. Yeah, another video. Let's, let's, let's get back into it. <laughs> and that we no longer want commitment, but eight out of 10 millennials still say true romance is important. So now that we've balanced the conversation a little bit, what does the dating process look like for you and I today and going forward? All of us here, we're in a unique position in that We've been able to live through transitions and evolutions as they've happened real time. We've gone from cassette tapes to CDs, from CDs to streaming, not only music but television. My phone is essentially a computer that fits in my pocket and affords me access to what seems like infinite information. And if I'm being honest, it's that dynamic that's spoiled me, the need for instant results. If my Uber takes longer than five minutes, I'm upset. And I've seen that influence other areas of my life, including the way I date, even down to the small things. I can't tell you how annoying it is to hear this thing actually ring. Every time somebody calls me, it's like, hello, are you dying? Hang up and text me. And I know I'm not the only one. And so that gives, a, gives us another dynamic to deal with. So how do we build relationships? Collectively, we are at an interesting place. We're basically in the twilight zone of romance. It's called the gray area. We meet people, whether it's at a lounge or through sending a DM or on a website. We hang out, whatever that means. Sometimes sex is involved. And now we begin these relationships that we don't call relationships because we don't want to be in relationships, but they feel like relationships because we do relationship things and now we are attached, but at the same time fighting to stay unattached. It's confusing. And now we're engulfed in these situations or what are now called situation ships. None of that is dating. Just real quick, is the whole situation ship, is that new? I feel like that's been since like the beginning like of time. I feel like that's been, I feel like it's been a thing, but I think definitely think it's, it's more popular than it's been mm. for this current, let's say, decade. So you think like the access to information has increased how much situation ships occur? Because we have so many options that are available at our fingertips. You never want to fully commit because yeah. you're like, 
what if I can get something better? Mm -hmm. You know what so I mean? So I would agree with that. I think also that, like you said, that need for instant gratification. Like if mm -hmm. this girl is or this guy is taking too long, oh, you won't work? I can go to who the next person that's in my DM. Whereas like that person there, if you would have like at least tried to have a little bit more faith, yeah, a relationship could have been established. There. Or they could have wasted your time. It's, it's just a hit or miss, but I think that's how what it is with dating, period. I think back in the day, they were fine with that hit or miss, period, versus now we're like, oh, no, nah, I'm not about to play that hit or miss thing. But I, I would argue the situationship era is a little bit different, but I still think it's a little bit better for dating. Let me try to give you a, a, a brief analogy. Let me, let me give you a brief analogy. Why because Why because the purpose of dating is to probably find the best suitor for you, but that's take, if it's your definition of dating. Because some no, people's no, no. definition of dating is involved with smashing as many people as possible. No, that's fine. some is, I'm trying to find the one. So I 100% so I agree with you. There's multiple reasons that people want to date. Right. But whether or not it's to date to find a relationship, you dating to find the best version of a relationship. Or whether or not it's to mm -hmm. date to find the best sexual partner, you're dating to find the best version of a sexual partner. Mm -hmm. You're trying to find the best version, mm -hmm. right? Um, so you can maximize your happiness, decrease the amount of time that you're spending on bullshit or what have you. There's still that similar type of a goal to maximize. I'd argue like the analogy that I was going to use is to say back before Uber, mm -hmm. we would take cabs and because of the inaccessibility to the information, we would be subjected to bullshit. The cab never showing up, we would be subjected to a shitty looking cab. We would be subjected to a driver with an attitude problem. Now, Uber and Lyft have changed the game. You get clean ass cars, you get people who are rated so they're incentivized to treat you nicely, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then they're there quicker than a cab would have ever been, right? Mm -hmm. So the access to information for that example has proved to be very beneficial for mankind. And I'd argue if the goal is to maximize your happiness or what have you, having more people accessible to you might maximize the option set which can increase um, the value of your decisions mm -hmm. but you may never commit you may never commit that's all right you can live like a damn but why have all those access to all those options and never commit well see the thing is is like should should we really want to subject or or ourselves to nullify the options to us to enable settling Mm. While also there's that perspective of the grass is always greener on the other side. Right. So like a hundred, let's say 20 years ago, back when we were like, we'll say like 400 years ago. Let's go back there. Let's say like 40 years back ago. Back in your time. Motherfucker. We were only subjected to the people <laughs> like in our tribe, right? right? Like right. in our in our general vicinity, right? Um, into our district, you know, back when we only had horses and shit. Then we got cars. Now, now we have access to people as far as a gas tank would, ta would, would take you, right? right? And, and we have planes, so now we could go cross-continental. But it's just increased the access. But the exponential growth was at the internet. Mm. Then, then you had like Black Planet, and now you got like Tinder. Shout out to Black Planet. But shout Planet. out to Black Planet. <laughs> shout out to Black Planet. But, throw back, throw back. So, so do you feel like back at like the Black Planet days, that was a good balance? Or do you or do you feel like now it's too much information which is allowing us not to chill? I think it's a little bit of both. It's the Black Planet days, well for me, I wasn't really allowed. I had like You were a baby. We went over this. I was a baby when in Black Planet. I had a page, but I was also very cautious because I was still like st the stranger danger talk will not even this, but stranger danger talk was, you was given on, to me. You was eighteen on the page, but was like seven no, in I real had, life. I had my real age on there and I had my parameters set. Set. Okay. I didn't play that. But okay. anyway, um, when we had the Black Planet days, you made sure you tried to at least speak with somebody, like you said, with the tribes, somebody was in your tribe or somebody that was in your age range. Mm. Now, because we have this more accessibility, it's more of like people can lie about their age, they can lie about what their interests. And I think that's what's really causing the dissonance in the dating world is because so many people lie to put mm. on this picture of what they think other people want instead of actually being you know who they are and it's like well Facts. if you can't find someone that you want you haven't even done the work to see like hey who am i and that's what nice. do i want compared to i'm gonna keep putting this energy and this yeah. image out because i think that's what people want that's complete and utter facts i think that um you said the word dissonance there's a clear dissonance of 
who you portray yourself to be versus mm -hmm. who you actually are. And in fact, there's so many people that don't understand who they actually are. Mm -hmm. They don't understand what their base is. They don't understand what really makes them happy. Like, you know, if I'm swiping on Bumble and Tinder, like the amount of goddamn um, uh, doggy filters and fucking... Oh, that's all you're gonna see, unfortunately, with my generation. It's, it's crazy, like, and motherfucker, I can't even see cute, your nose. It's a cute filter. Uh, like, I'm about to go through your Bumble account right now. I'm gonna you go can, through your... I don't have one, but my friends want me to create one. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. You don't need one. You, you're, you're, you're old fashioned. I'm a little old fashioned. I'm not gonna lie. I believe it. I'm not gonna lie. I Which believe it. I think also is a gift and a curse. Seriously, because I feel like if I'm old fashioned, so here's a little bit, a little information about me. So my parents had me at like 40. So I was, yeah, I have old parents. So I was raised on Motown you the and first Southern child? between them two, yes. Shout out to your pops. I think he did it correct. Uh, oh no, the first between them two, like oh. my mom. He has, I have another sister. Shout out to Vanessa Hanker if you watched it. Um, but she's like twice my age. Okay. All right, so, so he I did a younger, he chilled, and then came back later. Right. Okay. So, but I was raised on a more, more humble, grounding setting yeah. that I think my peers didn't get the opportunity to grasp. Yeah. So when I see what my parents had and I see what's going on today, it's nothing like it, which I think other people can relate to. But I also have a low tolerance for. We can cuss on here. Right? Mm -hmm. Bullshit. So right now I encounter a lot of bullshit. Then my friends ask, why are you single? And it's like, y'all want to see my list? <laughs> now, when you say list, it's your bullshit list or your list of like pushing from situationship to relationship? Mm, well, I mean, first for me, I... Because you're in your 20s. I'm in my 20s. So that means your list is like, it's not here. That motherfucker is. <laughs> that motherfucker. I'm at the ceiling no. right now. No, no, I'm no, at the no, ceiling no, no, and no. I'm at the ground but right I'm now. I'm saying this because I'm on the the other end of my 20s that list has decreased. Because I'm not going to lie, when I first was in college, I was like, this, 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 I want this, this, this. Well, now that you know you're a little older, you see more things, you're like, I'm liking a sub dad. So go ahead and scratch that out. So my list he is don't need to be no changing. More. He doesn't have to be. But you'd like him to be. I like someone that's taller than me. That's okay. where I'm at. How tall are you? I'm about five, five and a half. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of... Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so. I have girlfriends that are like, nah, he gotta be six foot or X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, okay, girl. Are they still on the on the latter end of their 20s? They're in the, yep. Oh, they're gonna be single for a minute. We hope not. Oh, are they gonna be watching this? I don't know you guys, okay? I'm going to send it to my friends and we're going to see. see because the homegirl that is definitely only sticks up and under, I'm going to send it to her and get her feedback. Get her feedback, okay? Because I think like we and we refer to this on the channel. We got to get back in the video here in a second, but like Ooh, we sure. talk about this on a, on a channel and it's called The Wall. Mm -hmm. And The Wall is at, and it's a different age for gen, like, there's like a, a, a kind of a hard age that I'd say, but it's different for every woman, I would say, mm -hmm. because slightly different. There's a variance because you guys age differently. Right. But like 34 is geriatric pregnancy is what it's medically mm -hmm. defined as. Which is BS, but. Talk, talk, talk to me. It's BS? I think it's BS because I also, I train, I do group session training. As one of my clients, she has had that discussion with me where she said when she first had her daughter, it was between her and one of her neighbors. Mm -hmm. And they both had their daughters within that mid 30 range. Mm -hmm. And they both were saying like, the, their doctors were telling them like, your kid so might have, you know, special needs because of your age. And I think that because our diets have changed, our habits have changed, that that logic no longer applies Whoa. or it's less likely to apply. Like for me, I feel Maybe. like I could have my kids at 40 and still be successful and thrive. Would I be open, uh, opening up the opportunity to still have them go through like what I went through where I lost my mom at a younger age? Yes, but I still also think my body is healthy enough. My eggs are flowing, well not flowing, but I have enough eggs where I could decide, hey, I'm gonna wait till 40, I think I could. I think the anecdotal experiences of your friends having healthy offspring doesn't offset the data of mm -hmm. what generally happens at that age. Mm -hmm. And the data says that but there are higher tested, risks. Who was tested in that data is my question. That's a whole nother discussion. Because if you only tested a certain I, demographic. I'm with you. I'm with you. 
And you are genetically different. I will say that. <laughs> she, she, <laughs> she's genetically different. Yeah, she's genetically different. We won't get into it. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> when I get back into the video, Let's get back into the video. Fantastic. In fact, nobody really knows what dating looks like at this point. So, I decided I'm gonna do a little research to find out what exactly people consider to be a formal date these days. Found a few definitions. The first I found in the answer section of Yahoo. So it has to be true. <laughs> a casual date is when you wear regular clothes and a formal date, but well, that's when you dress nicely. Makes sense. Then there was the answer I found on Yelp. Who knew Yelp gave dating advice? A user posted, a real date begins by going over to a young lady's house and talking to her parents about your intentions, then getting a DNA swab. <laughs> so no one knows what a formal date is. And you know, that's funny, but it's also proof that our dating habits have to evolve. Because life has evolved. And generations past potential. What's up? So my question to you is, because he's talking about, well, one, don't trust Yelp for dating advice. That's strictly for food restaurants, last I checked. But he was researching. What is your definition of a formal date? Of a formal date? Mm-hmm. Coffee. Really? Yeah. Elaborate, please. I think that um, when I want to get to know somebody from a hole in the wall, like there's no prior knowledge about who this person is, so let's say a Tinder or a Bumble hookup, I will formally try to get to know them at coffee. Mm. Uh, and the reason is, is that as a purpose-driven man who, one of my goals in life is financial independence way earlier than what um, society or media tells me that I should have access to financial independence. I can't waste money on people or situations just for the mm. sake of what the culture tells me. Mm. So mm. My, my definition <laughs> of a formal date is the time that I'm spending to get to know, know and understand you. And to do that, I think like the most accessible way to do that is um, where it's at the, the, the least cough cost to me. Because um, I feel like, yeah, I'm, I'm, what's up? You said the least cost to you. So, because I feel like you can still get to know a person even through dinner. Yeah, that's fine. But, but that's not but the least cost. But why not? But, okay. Because it's, it's way more expensive. Depending on where you go. Well. Compare it to coffee at anywhere you go. True. And what if they don't like coffee? Go get tea. And uh, hey, listen, what I'm trying to say is when I say coffee, I mean that's, I, I can formally date or get to know and meet somebody mm -hmm. not going to dinner. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people will self-select into movies or dinner, but I feel like there's better ways to get to, to know people. And like if you're at coffee, it's way more easier to break off if the shit's not going well, that's true. right? Like. That's um, true. You know, it's way more things that you could do. I feel like you can move a little bit better doing a, a coffee. I don't think the the cost that I'm putting into it needs to be um, her her gateway or her entryway for formality. Mm. You know. Okay. That's my definition. Any okay. any any comments? Let's see. When's the last time you've been on a coffee date? Last time I've been on a coffee date? It's, now, it's been a while. When you went on a coffee date, did you give as much respect as when you went on a dinner date? I believe so, yes. Because I felt like when I've... <laughs> <laughs> Save your but chips, Jets! Save the thing, your no, chips! But here's the thing. I've had more dinner dates recently than I've had coffee dates. And I wouldn't mind having a coffee date, but that's not something that people be like, hey, let's go get coffee. And I, I would be like, fine. But I think because of how society has shaped it, it's always... I like this person. Take him to dinner. The game's What's your changing. favorite restaurant? Let's go. The game's changing. We talked about before the bevy of options that young women have available to them now more than ever before. But it's more of us though. So Yeah, there's more people, but there's also no, more No, no, options. there's more women. Yeah. So technically y'all have more options than we do. No, no, no. It's still, <laughs> the population is still 50-50. Mm -mm. Yes, that's mm -mm. Census Bureau data. Okay, bring that up. Had a little on a little strip on the bottom if you can. But I feel like even here, it's definitely more options available for you than it is for me as an African-American woman. Well, it also depends who's in your option set. True. Because who's in my option set is going to be a lot more fluid than who's, who's in your option set. <laughs> you don't know my option set. Yeah, well, I don't know your option set, but uh, you lead me to believe that you have a very finite option set. I don't think so. 
So mine is a little more open, I guess, in relation to the people that I be around. That's fine. Um, but still, this 50-50 mm -hmm. split in America. So we technically have as much option, but typically young black women want a young black man. Typically. Typically. Right. And a young black man wants... Women, period. <laughs> the most feminine, nurturing, and dope one that they can find, generally. How are they? What are they doing to find that person? Tinder, Bumble, coffee dates. Hopefully they're doing coffee dates. That's such a big Because you know why? Items though. Because you got coffee listen. date on one end and Tinder on the other. I was on the same vein. Because here's the thing. You just said, uh -huh. yes, coffee date was just as valuable as the dinner date. But I've had more offers for dinner than coffee. Yeah, but I'm, I'm giving a different strategy. Uh -huh. So I'm saying, dudes, take them on coffee dates because they have 17 other dates in their, in their, um, the inbox. possibility for the inbox for the month. Okay. Okay. So I'm saying, why spend all this money? You know what I'm saying? On doing something and figuring out who's the best fit for you at this value. No, don't do that. Ladies, accept coffee dates. <laughs> accept them, you said, right? Accept them. There it is. Two couples would meet at the skating rink or at the school dance. Not too long ago when going on a date, it was expected of me to drive to a young lady's house and meet her at her front door. Today, a date could be a 30-minute conversation at Starbucks, or it could take place via Skype. The internet age has redefined the way we meet and the way we communicate with people. That does present us with a new set of challenges, but it's not the internet's fault. It's not Tinder's fault. Poor Tinder. Takes the blame for everything. The fact is, the social rules for dating have always changed from one generation to the next. Today, we have countless tools at our disposal that make many different aspects of life more efficient. Why should dating be exempt from that? Are more Americans single and waiting longer for commitment? Yes, my generation included. Only 26% of adult millennials are married. But it is also true that technology has made the world smaller, which makes our chances of meeting like-minded people greater than they've been in the past. The key for us as we move forward is to remember that the tools that are at our disposal, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Tinder, Bumble, Match, just to name a few, they're just tools. They do help us to reach and connect to people. But the job of creating meaningful and clearly defined relationships, that job is still ours. Unfortunately, there isn't a standardized roadmap on how to find love. As much as I wish it was, there isn't an app for it. Dating is no longer just an event or series of events. Dating in today's world is a dual process. The first part involves us finding someone that deserves our exclusive attention, which requires that we be intentional and almost tedious in our attachments. That we grow to be self-aware enough that we know who we are at our core, which will help us to identify the best potential partner. That we stay active and engaged and don't lose the art of being social, which means we have to multitask and remember life shall also be lived offline. The latter part of the dating process involves building a life with one person which means we have to make a choice, even when it seems like we can swipe left or right for as long as we want, because there's unlimited options at our fingertips. Last year, the number of social media users... Just real quick, um, I'm probably gonna wrap up the video right now. Um, fantastic speaker, um, mm -hmm. Kevin Carr, I haven't, I haven't heard of, um, of you before, but if you ever watched this, I, I, I appreciate the way he's articulating it, very mm -hmm. clear, um, he's not placating to one side or the other. He's just talking about kind of kind of what's going on today. It's like a state of the union um, What he was saying is that you have to make a choice mm -hmm. you And gotta be active about it. You gotta be active about making that choice. The problem is is what I see from my perspective is I feel like There's no incentive 
as a man to make a choice anymore. Hmm. It's not like it would have used to be. Mm, how do you mean that? The incentive has been decreased. Um, and I think especially as the definition of genders have started to shift mm -hmm. over the last five to 10 years, uh, we get different level of understanding of what it takes to be a woman in a relationship. Um, we get a different level of understanding of what it takes to be a man in a relationship. And due to or out there kind of sifting through the countless amount of options, the bevy of the options available to us, it's like, and as you get these different layers of understanding of what their role in a relationship is, there's like a ever, um, um, it's like a, it's like a forever search of finding out the pinnacle. But it's like the pinnacle, it's like you almost will never get there. Mm -hmm. Especially because mm -hmm. what in your mind, what you think would be a dope option, there's far less on the opposite sex that want to roll that way. Mm -hmm. Right? Like the concept of uh, a man being the head of household and a woman being the rib is something that like, even if you say it nowadays, even though it's biblical, you say it nowadays in front of the wrong person, they, they get take aggressive. It the wrong way, they yeah. take it the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? So that's my final thought. I don't know if you have a final thought. My final thought was like <laughs> when you said about the active piece, because I feel like now people just expect things to still fall into their lap. And then when they look at the options that are available in their lap, mm. they're like, eh, well, that's okay. Or mm, I might go with them. Versus like you said, you have to actively be looking. And I think we just don't actively look outside of, okay, I'm gonna actually create this Bumble account. I mean, I know I'm not gonna be out at coffee shops like, who's trying to date? But <laughs> it's like, how can I actively be more involved in dating according to what I want? Another piece is I think that we still create this story of who we think we want without it being a little more close to reality. Mm. Like you look at the people that's in your circle, are those people, are those certain traits you might want in a, in a, in a partner? Like, I still don't think that we're asking ourselves those questions in order to, just in order to find that person and actually be active in that search. Cause I think when you do see something in somebody, you're like, okay, I want that. But it was like by accident, we humbled upon, we stumbled upon that compared right. to if, Okay, I'm actually in an observant role and I'm looking around and seeing what's around me. Okay, that point right there or, hmm, I like what they did. I'm going to remember that for later. Like, kind of remembering that where you have that more connection to reality instead of that story so that you can find what you want. Boom. All right. At, oh, mic drop. Just, go I, I was feeling that. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> you little mic dropper. All right, listen. Questions, comments, concerns. Y'all already know what to do. There's a comment box right down there. Go ahead, write it down there. Ashley. Yes, sir. We gotta do another one. We actually might. This is fun. Ain't hey, no might. We're gonna do another one. Okay. All right. I need you committed. I need you in there. I'm down. All right. Let's do another one. We gotta fill up our cups real quick. We gotta show this uh, Ciroc some respect. He has this huge Ciroc bottle. You guys. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! It just came out of nowhere. I was like that. I could I'm for that, that over there. I'm for that. I'm actually for that. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> oh, I'm still sick. Again, questions, comments, concerns, write it down in the description box, in the comment box down below. Mediocre tutorials and reviews at gmail.com. Thank you, Mr. Michael Bennett, for the suggestion. Listen, there's a Patreon link right down there. Y'all need to go and take a look. There's some benefits up there. I show footage up there that I don't show up here. And that's for real. All right, until next time, you two. Pardon me. <laughs> Don't hit my Peace. face. Peace. Oh!